Okay, well, many thanks. Uh, it would be a pleasure to be in Valencia. Unfortunately, it isn't like, uh, hopefully it will change in the future. What I'm going to talk about in this talk is somehow related to one of the previous talks, the one by Ignacio Reyes, because uh, I will try to convince you that there are some scenarios that are not the usual ones in which one uses quantum field theory and curve spaces, but it could also be of help. So I will be considering the action in equation one. That means I will be considering a scalar field file, a quantum scalar field file. It will be mainly in flat space time, and I will consider a varying mass, or if you want to, a space time dependent mass. This will allow us to, to consider several effects. For example, the famous, uh, uh, let's say, Lifshitz configurations. Maybe you have heard about Casimir effect, if you have heard Ignacio Reyes talk, for example, in which you have this configuration of parallel plates that you can see in figure one extracted from the famous paper by Lifshitz. In the case of Lifshitz, the, the situation is let's say more subtle because he considers not a perfectly conducting plate, but instead they are the electric medium. So one region one and region two have some permittivity and therefore you should do a, an analog of what I will be doing here, which is considering some M that depends on, on X. If you want to, you may also have a look at the simplified situation, let's say the cubist situation uh, on the right. I mean, you have a, a green medium with some permittivity, and at some point you meet the blue one, a body, let's say a different body that has another permittivity. That would be mainly the, the first part of my talk, and then I will also talk uh, about another special case, which is the mass square equals to a delta, which I will explain as the following. And uh, maybe you have heard about metamaterials, which are materials that are generated by humans. They are not in the nature. You won't find them in the nature. And for example, you may want to consider the picture in the middle the one by Owe et al. from 2021, in which the surface of the material is not completely flat, but instead it has some, some curvature, let's say. In that case, you may, co may consider an effective model for that situation, which is given by the, the picture of Owe et al. also on, on the middle right hand side, let's say, the one that I'm underlining with green so that you may have a flat surface but with a space-time dependent let's say permittivity in that way you may find uh, many interesting effects if you consider metamaterials. materials for example you may have the, the situations described on the right hand side of the screen in which for example you you make you consider an incident green, green photon, and by a Doppler shift on the, this material, it becomes blue. Or, for example, it may have some some broken symmetry, so that at some point it is uh, you it is perfectly reflecting, and in the other direction it is not. And that is in in the case of the orange photons. Or you may also try to bend the some beams in some direction. So this is pretty exciting, and I will show you how to make contact with curved space times and quantum field theories. So uh, I guess that the most general situation that could be described in terms of quantum fields would be the one given in equation two. I mean, I'm adding to the quantum scalar field phi a classical field sigma that is to be taken as a background. And 
the reason, the main reason, if you want to, is the following. You can compute, for example, if you want to, to, to compute it, you can compute the, the stress energy tensor, which is shown, for example, in equation three. Actually, in equation three, I'm just considering the so-called adiabatic four contribution to the stress energy tensor. So, of course, I'm making some power counting. And in that case, you see uh, in the last line that you have some divergent terms that are contributing and have some derivatives acting on sigma. So the coupling that gives this contribution is lambda one. So it was the coupling that was actually the one uh, coming from the, the sector of the phi field, the mass varying field. So you see that I'm generating some contributions that actually, if you want to renormalize, those we will be renormalized by a coupling between this sigma field and the curvature. So having said so, uh, there are some peculiarities. For example, at the classical level, you have a, a conservation law, which is given in equation four, and is also kept in the quantum case. If you, for example, if you choose the, the renormalization uh, that I'm showing on the left hand side, I mean the subtraction of adiabatic terms to order two for the for the two point function and order four for the stress energy tensor. One of the of the main properties, let's say, that we have shown to be valid is the principle of visual work, which is this principle disconnects, uh, I would say, the direct computation of the forces acting on a body, let's say, by direct integration of the stress energy tensor. You have the picture on the left, you, you consider one body, you may consider the stress energy tensor on the boundary of that body, you made the integral and you have the force acting on that body, but you may also consider a change of energy. Maybe you have also seen this kind of computations in the case of the two place in the classical Casimir effect. In the classical Casimir effect, you have the two plates and you may consider by changing the distance consider the, the energy and changing the distance of these two plates that you actually can compute the force. In our general situation, this is not so easy to prove. And we have done it performing a perturbative expansion of, of the stress energy tensor. So for example, we are computing, we have computed the two point function at every order in sigma, and that's what you see on the left and the bottom part of the screen. Then we have used those results to go to the T menu. And it is important to notice that we have employed the conservation law that I have shown you in the previous slide. And in that way, we have an order by order proof that the principle of visual work works in our case. There are some other connections that I want to mention regarding quantum physics and curve space. For example, I guess that you may have heard about the Babinski Bilkovsky expansion of heat kernels in asymptotic Euclidean spaces. In our case, we can also compute some form factors. For example, if you go and consider the T mu at order one in sigma you will see that the expression is given by this non-local formula that you see in equation seven, in which you have a log of Q squared, or if you want to, if you, if you want to make connection with, with curved space time, you can also think of this in, in space time. So this would be a log, a, a log box contribution. Again, you can also compute the second order contributions and then also compute the form factors 
And one thing that you should remember at any point is that all these results are dealing with distributions. So you have to keep in mind that you will have some regulators in this expression. For example, I'm sure we, it's not important to know the special form or, or all these form factors, but just to check that the ones in the denominator, which is the three, has the appropriate regulators. Why I'm telling you that? Well, because uh, it is a rather well-known fact that if you approach a boundary, a perfect boundary, at this point I'm thinking again, let's say on, on the typical Casimir effect configuration in which you have some plates with ideal Dirichlet under conditions, you may compute the T menu, the stress energy tensor in that case, and whenever you go or you approach the boundary, you will see that the T menu will diverge. Uh, in our case, we can we can analyze a similar effect in which uh, we consider a discontinuous mass. So we are not considering some ideal perfect uh, conducting plates, but we are considering some discontinuous mass. So we are considering a body that is uh, inside another, let's say, bath or, or another body, and in that case. You can do the computation with the present formulas, and you will get, of course, distributions. That what that's what you're seeing in equation ten. You see delta primes going up there, and you can also see some powers, inverse powers of the coordinates when you arrive at the boundaries, let's say at A or at B. But these are also distributions, and the definitions are you can see are in equation eleven, twelve, and so on. You can also do some additional computation in order to compare. For example, you may also do an expansion in derivatives, as, let's say a WKB computation, and you will also find, let's say, the same sort of, of result, but in this case, you will lose the regulators. So in this case, you will see what uh, Deutsch and Candelas were seeing in the papers from the 70s, that is that you have a sort of divergence contribution when you approach the boundary. I'm looking at equation 15, where you see if you have a step, uh, you will have a contribution that goes like if x minus uh, the position of the boundary to minus 2. Uh, OK, so I guess I have still some time to discuss the, the other situation that I wanted to share with you which is the, the delta sheet situation. In this case, the scalar field is coupled to a variant mass, but in this case, uh, the, the variant mass is just contained on a surface, on a hypersurface, to be properly, to proper speak. And the coupling will be divided into a, a constant part, zeta, which will be treat, treated to all order, let's say non perturbatively and some fluctuations around those that, that constant zeta that will be called eta and will be allowed to depend on the coordinates. As you may know, defective action is just given by the, the quantum part, let's say, is given by one half the trace log of, of a Laplacian operator, which in this case is given by the delta. And you can also go on and compute the, the quadratic, let's say, in eta term, which will be probably the most important contribution. Because if you consider just the, the first order contribution, well, that would be just a, a boundary contribution, um, and it will probably vanish. In the case of the quadratic one, as I was saying, you can go further and compute also some form factors to, for this case, which are given in the bottom of the screen. So you see there that there are some, some intrinsic uh, relations between the geometry given by the k-parallel, which is the 
the, the, the Fourier coordinates uh, of eta and the theta, which is the coupling. If you want, you may also compute more specifically some expansions and have a look at what happens if the variations of the eta are bigger or just the, the coupling zeta is bigger. And there you can see that you have these two uh, expansions. For example, if you go for large A, you will see that there are some A squared, A to the fourth in the denominator. By some points, you get an A to the five. And that signals that these, mm, these form factors are non local again. So the same situation can be seen also for, for small a's. There you can see that you have some log a contributions and also some proportional to, to k parallel. The important thing about these, about these non analyticities is that you can go and work in Minkowski space. After you do this rotation, you can you can try to see the persistence of the vacuum. Or in other words, you can try to, to read the probability of pair creation. I will just skip this, if, but if you have any questions, you may ask me. And for example, you may consider one situation in which the etas vary with time, let's say oscillating with time. And then you can compute the imaginary part of the defective action and see actually that the non-analyticities that I was talking about in the previous slides appear in this, in this expression. For example, if you consider zeta much more bigger than, than the frequency of, of the variation in this theta, you will see that you have an omega zero to the five, which is actually the expansion that I was previously mentioning. The same situation is for zeta smaller than the frequency. And you can see there that there are some logs. So I have included some plots, but since I don't have much time, I will just go to the conclusions. And I will just say one that is goes also in the direction of Ignacio Regis, that you may compute many things and probably quantum field theory in curve space techniques are the best option to tackle at least the problems that, that I have described. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian, for, for the nice talk. Um, do we have any questions? I think we have can have a couple. So I have a question related to the form factors, which I think it's quite interesting. Um, if I have understood it right, so your motivation to study this color field background is maybe to study some imprints in metamaterials and and this kind of uh, thing. So my question is, uh, if you can talk a bit more about the, the form factors, if, if you could measure them or some corrections in, in some uh, experiments or, or or what what can be the, the imprint of studying these form factors in, in some. Well, so far as I know, there is currently no no experiment, um, no experimental data on, on that side. Um, but I would say, in principle, it is it is doable. Um, uh, I mean, the the probability of pair creation is something that should be measurable. So, even if you may not be able to to read all the form factors, let's say not all the powers. The one that uh, that produced the, this kind of effects should be missing. Okay, I see. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, is there any other question? If not, we can still continue on Slack if there are other questions later on. Uh, thank you again, Sebastian. Uh,